Hey everybody, all right, my name is Soleil. Today we're talking about the new fragrance that came out from Navitas slash collab AI the Great. It is Amorous Intense. This is it right here. I did do a short video about a week ago on my first impressions and I was gonna try to do a final thoughts around last Monday, but um, life lives, you know? Life has been lifing and I do over 50 hours a week and I'm wearing my scrub shirt because I'm about to go massage right after I do this video. So uh, I'm just so happy that I could squeeze this video in during the time that we still have that 30% uh, code that I wanted to uh, make sure that you guys got for those who are interested in it. So, all right, I am going to go ahead and get into my review. Amorous Intense and Ambrosia Imperial. This to me is the flanker to this. They are very, very similar. This has more musk in it. This, there's no notes on the site or on Fragranica saying this has musk in it, which is why I bought it, uh, but it definitely, there's musk in it. There's something in it that, that's musky about it. Um, and then it just seems like they toned down the musk and then they switch up the fruit. So instead of banana, they had pear apple. So these are very, very similar. Um, when I think of a flanker comparison, it's like if anyone has ever smelled Ariana Grande's clouds, like they're like a note or two off from each other, but they're pretty much the same thing. Black opium, same thing. Or they're like they're a little off, but they're not com you know, completely the same, but they're still pretty much the same thing. That's these two. So if you liked this, you're gonna like this, unless you have issues with apple and pear. If you did not like this, there is a very strong chance you're not going to like this. So definitely think about that when you're buying it, because this this does have, uh, like, there's musk somewhere in it. I'm very surprised that there's no musk in it, if there actually isn't. Because I don't like musk in general. I don't like, you know, even though like, there is like that white linen musk that is kind of like subdued that I don't care for, but I don't hate. And then there's like that animalic musk that is like pungent and like almost makes you feel like it's like sharp, like your nose hairs are burning. And that is what I feel that's the like animalic musk is in this. When I first got this, I was not feeling this at all. Um, just to do it real quick on this. I uh, let this sit for months. I actually never thought I was gonna wear it again. And then recently I've been thinking about how, uh, one, people said it was a fall scent. I thought it was a summer scent. I agree now, it, this is more fall winter in my mind. Um, I like to mix and match my fragrances. Like 99% of the time I'm mixing and matching. So I thought about it and I wanted to do a quick share of what I, I mix and match with. So I have been in love with the new Bare Vanilla Cashmere from Victoria's Secret. Uh, if you can, get your hands on it. If you haven't, this is a great base for a lot of fragrances. And then I would put the Ambrosia Imperial and then I would put KLA 28, which is literally my like all time favorite. This is so versatile. Like if like all my fragrances like vanished and I had to replace them, this would definitely be on my top like five or whatever that I like I had to replace like instantly. So anyways, these two go very well together. And this kind of helps calm down the musk in this. Cause even though the musk has calmed down over months, it's still, you know, present. So if you don't like musk, you know, it's not going away. It's just a little calmer. So um, let me go ahead. I spray these on paper. The apple and the pear really come through. You know, people have uh, compared this to like a Jolly Rancher. I can see that that direction that it's going in. Um, it definitely is giving that type of like candy vibe on top of that musk. That banana note is really interesting to me in Ambrosia Imperial because uh, it's something I normally wouldn't migrate to, but I actually really do appreciate it. I do like it. And even though they are very, very similar, it's also given me like a different olfactory experience with the banana versus the pear apple. The pear apple is a more common experience, which in fact, I brought two fragrances I wanted to share. If you're wanting the pear apple, if that's what you're like migrating to, like you're like, oh, I just want that pear apple, whipped cream type, you know, sweet vibe, but you know you're not gonna like it because of the musk, I have another combo that I wore this week out of curiosity uh, of kind of duping that vibe. And Ariana Grande's uh, God is a Woman has a pear note, Casablanca has an apple note, put them together, and of course, marry them with this, and you got yourself an apple pear, sweet you know vibe going on without the musk so just something to think about anyhow all right 
So now that I've given my thoughts, I do like it. I just think that it's a flanker to this. They really didn't even need to name it a different name. They could have named it Ambrosia Imperial too, just because like, you know, they're just, they're very similar to me. Um, AI the Great has a lot of very hyped up uh, fans and smaller YouTubers that I see. And this isn't just her, this is like in general. Like with YouTube in general, you get somebody who climbs the ladder and you know, they do their handshakes with different businesses. And so then they hype up those businesses, even though those businesses aren't extremely amazing, they make it out to be like they're amazing. Uh, hence why you have YouTubers talking about Navitas, like it's the most amazing thing. But the way I see it with Navitas, put a Navitas fragrance in Alta or Sephora or Nordstrom's and see how well it sells without having a YouTuber's name attached to that fragrance. Uh, guarantee it's not gonna sell as well. So then you have the YouTubers that are praising these businesses that, you know, are okay. And then you have smaller YouTubers praising the big YouTuber because the smaller YouTuber is trying to climb the ladder too. And uh, and it's just like this cycle of like trying to make money. And that shit pisses me off sometimes. Cause like, I wanna go back to the time where people were getting on YouTube because it was a passion, it was a hobby. They enjoyed talking about products. It wasn't about just making money, you know, people who get monetized, they start stressing out if, if their video isn't monetized and, you know, they say that their opinions are completely, you know, non-biased. But when somebody is giving you PR, when somebody is giving you uh, money to say that a product is good, you're going to have a biased opinion. I don't care. Same thing goes with these smaller YouTubers that are talking about these products that are also kind of slash super fans of YouTubers like AI the Great. They're a, their reviews are going to be like through the roof. It's amazing. It's the most amazing thing I've ever had in my life. Oh my God. You know, and I'm just kind of like, zoom down, calm down. It's not that great. It's, it's all right. It's all right. You know, it's a vibe. It's not like that though. Shit. Like so far I've seen what someone on Instagram posted that someone had said it's a godly experience. Like I have Botox in my face right now, so I can't make the, the what the fuck face with my eyebrows, but imagine I'm making the what the fuck face with my eyes. I'm just like, no, no. Godly experience, uh, I don't know any any materialistic thing that's gonna take me there. People that are like, this is mouth watering. This is so juicy. This is so blah, 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 blah. I'm like, she's good. She's all right, I like her. I don't get super excited when I smell her, but I definitely appreciate the experience. And that's where I stand with that. So again, just something to think about, you know, when you're looking at YouTubers and you're looking at different reviews and you're, you're getting hyped up, you know, you're like, fuck yeah, I gotta try it. And then you try it and you're like, this is a fucking letdown because the person has, you know, a reason why they're, you know, there's a bias behind, and some of them don't even know it. They're getting hyped because it's like group think, like in psychology you have, you know, a thought happens, and then it you know, spreads to another person, another person, and the next thing you know, all these people are on the exact same page and they don't even know why because they didn't even like have that feeling to begin with. So it's like the same thing when you, people get hyped up over products and then all of a sudden everybody wants to try it, you know? I'm the same way, I'm the same way. When I first saw this come out, I was like, I'm not getting it because one, Navitas to me is not that great of a company. I have um, Venom of Love, Chocolate Queen, Ambrosia Imperial, and now this. And so far they're okay. They're not completely disappointing blind buys at all, but they're just okay. You know, like I usually like for like Venom of Love, I will either reach for Lost Cherry or do Chestnut from Greedy. Those are my like go-to for the cherry experiences. But I do like Venom of Love. It's just not like an oh shit experience. Chocolate Queen was a disappointment because people made it sound, you know, they hyped it up. Like it was gonna be some super gourmand chocolate decadent chocolate experience. And it's all right, you know? Like, I don't think it's, you know, none of them are worth the price point that Navitas is trying to sell these for, which I'm going to talk about in a second. So again, our whiff of my apple pear. All right, Navitas. Navitas, I was looking at the site the other day and all their products, they have 100 mil and they have 125 mil. Their 100 mil go for, goes for about $200. Their 125 mil goes for about $300, all of them across the board. All the 300 mil have the same bottle, or 300 mil, sorry, 125 mil have the same bottle. Um, so for a quarter more, if you break down, I don't, I don't do it with math, so I'm not saying that I'm, I'm a mathematically inclined person, but I did pull out the old calculator and try to figure it out. And a quarter more 
is about between $40 and $50 more for the product, but they're, they're charging you $100 more for one quarter more product, they're charging you $100 more. To me, that doesn't make any sense. Now I get it, they have the fancy box, the bottle and the cap is probably different, more pricey than the 100 ml bottle and cap. Um, when it comes to packaging, I get it. Like it is exciting when you get a package, it's very nice. Like uh, Zerzhov um, and their stars collection, I forget which one I have, but like it came with like little meteorite uh, rocks and the box had like this gold plate in it that had like the batch number etched, you know, sketched into it. Like it was very fancy, very like, you know, um, bougie experience. And I kept that box for probably about a few months and then I realized what the fuck am I doing with this box? It's just sitting there and I'm hoarding it. So I threw it away. Um, there's a guy that I follow, I think the fragrance, the fragrance guy is his name? Perfume guy? I forget. I follow a whole bunch of different people on YouTube. But the guy uh, talks about getting discounted products. So you go to these sites like Fragrance by uh, Fragrance Net. Um, there's a few of them that are out there that are discount sites and what they do is they sell the same fragrance to you except it comes in like a white cardboard box because it was originally meant to be a floor model uh, that was going to go into like the malls and whatnot. So you get the same fragrance, same product, same everything, but it just comes in a very cheap box. Or in some cases they don't come with a cap, but I've always, I like my cap, so I'll, I'll pay extra to have a cap on it. Um, but the fact that box alone is jacking up the price that much, like keep keep your fucking box. I, I, don't, I don't need to, you know, come with throw the box away anyway. As soon as I opened this up, I like tore into the box. I was like, so like, I needed to know what it smelled like. And I took the box, I threw it in my recycling like instantly. Um, Cause I have no need for it. If you're a crafty person, you're gonna reuse the box and do something special with it. Yeah, keep the boxes. But if you're like just hoarding boxes, like, you know, you kind of get to a point where you have to really question like, what am I gonna do with this? Like. It needs to go to trash. So at that point, if the price is getting jacked up 50 more dollars because of this box, get rid of the fucking box. That, you know, that's how I feel about that. Um, you look at what Navitas is, Navitas is like a distributing company, right? So they have their name, Navitas. And then they have their staff of perfumers, which I actually have them up here. Let me see here. About Navitas, let me see, where is their, per our perfumers. Yeah, so, so they have about like 15, perfumers, I'm assuming on their staff or who they work with, whatever. So those perfumers get paid uh, to create the product. Navitas distributes the product, has their name on it. And then for certain fragrances like this, they then collab with the YouTuber. And of course the YouTuber more than likely is getting paid too. Um, so I get that everybody gets paid in the process, but then again, I'm just like, other fragrances, like the other fragrances that are not YouTube backed also go for $300. So then it just kind of turns into what are we paying for, for that extra 50 bucks? Like what are we paying for? You know? Um, and even so, I don't mind everybody getting paid, but at the same time, like it just, it's way more expensive than it should be for an indie brand. Uh, when you get to the point where you're like MFK, Baccarat Rouge. Yeah. I, I threw down the money for, for Baccarat Rouge and the X-Rate. Um, I have a few others from them too. I think they're worth the money. You know, they are established. They're not using YouTubers to sell their products. When you're using social media influencers to sell your product, to me that says, says that your product isn't up to speed and that you need someone to hype it up. For instance, let me talk about Budweiser. Everyone knows Budweiser. Budweiser has been around for many decades. I mean, anybody who's old enough who remember even in the eighties, they had um, Spud McKenzie, Spud McKenzie the dog. They have women in bikinis and whatever, and they always have like, they're known for their funny commercials, they're known for, you know, uh, all these different like, you know, things that hype them up. But Budweiser tastes like shit. Like it is the most basic, like it's definitely, I don't drink Budweiser products just because like, you know, I'm more, like I'm a Samuel Adams fan, I'm more domestic microbreweries. Like I, I have no interest in Budweiser. Budweiser is, like towards the bottom of the barrel of of uh, beers. Like if you're going to drink Budweiser, the way I see it, it's not for the flavor, it's to get fucked up, right? So they have to hype themselves up in order to compete with other beers that are not 
doing the same thing. They don't have influencers, they don't have commercials, they don't have models, they don't have any of it because the product is selling itself. So that's how I feel about Navitas. Not saying Navitas is the Budweiser of fragrance, I'm just saying that anytime you use influencers to hype your products up, there's a reason why. You know, it's one thing to use like a YouTuber to get you yourself with the ball rolling, but when you're using YouTubers back to back to back, it just, and then you're smelling the products and they're just kind of like, okay, you know? It just seems that they are not worthy of the price point that they are uh, trying to sell themselves at. There's a one chick, oh, what's her name? It's like a boyfriend, girlfriend duo. Her name is Curly something. I bought one of her fragrances. I'm gonna talk about that at some point. Um, 125 mil, it was like 160 bucks. I'm like, that makes sense. You're a smaller indie brand. You're trying to reel people in by offering more product. That makes sense. Yes, I will spend $160 on that product, you know, while they're getting known, whatever. Navitas has a shit ton of fragrances, so they are known. When I looked up some of their fragrances on Fragranica, either A, they didn't show up at all, or B, they didn't get good ratings. So um, I don't have a high opinion of Nav or Nav Navitas. Am I saying it right? Navitas? I'll say Navitas. I am not a huge fan of Navitas. I'm not against Navitas. I'm just not... I don't think they're worth $300, point blank. So with that said, that long spiel that I just did, I do believe though that, you know, because of inflation, because of what's going on, you know, like the uh, Dolce & Gabbana I just bought, I forget what they call it, it's, it's like hyped up right now on YouTube where it smells like lemon. I bought that from uh, Ulta. That one for like 150, I think, for 100 mil. So the bet this is 125, at, at 207, yes because you're getting that, that goes back to that whole entire like, you know, when it was like the curly scent um, fragrance was 160, you know, so I do feel this is worth 207, definitely. You know, right now with inflation and everything going on and you're getting 25% more than you average, you know, fragrance, I do think this is worth uh, 207. Um, $300, like no way, no, not I. Uh, which is why I ended up buying this too, because I was looking and I was like, I know myself, I know I'm the kind of person that uh, I you know, I would need to know, you know, and I hate missing out. And I saw they had no muskna notes, and then I was like, if I wait too long, I'm going to miss out on this 30% discount, and then I'm going to be annoyed, because I'm not going to ever know if it smells good or not. Um, so, yeah. 207, yeah, I definitely think it's worth it. There is a code. I did check it out today. I got on the site and put an item in my cart and put in AI30 and it took AI30 and uh, it says the price is 206.50. So I would definitely, if you're going to buy this, buy it now. Why it's still $100 cheap, cheaper than what it's gonna be. Um, this actually went down on Fragranica like a few days ago. It was um, 408, 4.08 was the rating, and now it's down to 3.89. So more and more people are trying this. I guess more and more people, because originally for Granica, you're gonna get like the super fans slash the super haters. They're gonna come out. Somebody really put a lot of effort into trying to ruin her uh, reviews in the beginning um, when it hadn't even come out yet. So I don't know what that's about. There was somebody I wanted to, before I end this, See if I can scroll all the way down now that there is a lot of reviews. I don't know if I'm gonna be able to get to the person. There's a lot of bickering back and forth between people. Okay, this is the person. Sweet 69, if I'm correct. Because people had a problem with, but I thought that this person had a good point, if I'm correct. Let me see. Uh, let's see. Navitas perfumes doesn't do returns once you try a fragrance, so that's a turnoff. And two, they are rude to customers, and three, they recycle their fragrances and add a new name to them, allegedly. Whether that's true or not, I don't know. Um, but, and let's see, she says, uh, she's praising LaBelle. She says, sounds like a sweeter LaBelle, if you ask me. She hasn't even tried it yet, I guess, at that point. Um, but she was like, the first fragrance was too musky. And uh, let me see if I scroll a little bit more. This was the one. I don't know where she got her information from, but I felt that it was like something to think about, like to look into if you are curious about Navitas. Someone else had mentioned that the Navitas owner apparently is like a millionaire who got into the fragrance, you know, so it's kind of like, oh, let's see, do, 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 do. scrolling through. 
I might not be able to get to her. Yeah, so I guess that was it pretty much. Um, when you're reading these these uh, reviews, if you get off for Granica, really like read them because some of these people are going to be praising the shit out of the fragrance. And you can tell the ones who really actually genuinely like it. Um, like this one right here, Catmo, she says, I was really unsure about this open first spray, but as it dries down, I start to fall in love. So, you know, certain people are giving like legit, you know, that they're nervous, you know, they don't know how they're going to feel about it, but then as they start to wear it, they appreciate it or they can't stand it. It's one or the other. Um, this person right here, she says, uh, well, she made a point because people were talking about the coffee note. She goes, I'm not getting any of the coffee nor the whipped cream. Um, she says, this does not project and lasts about four hours on my skin. This and this are pretty much the same equivalent. They are, I do smell them, you know, throughout the day. Uh, but I do usually, with all my fragrances, unless it's like super strong, I'll go ahead and spray midday anyways. So I can see her, you know, saying about four hours. I would definitely spray this. I spray my fragrances, unless they're like super like, thick oil type fragrances, I'd spray them on my clothes so it like sticks. Uh, yeah, I guess that's it pretty much. That's all I had to really say. If you're thinking about buying it, you're not sure, do your research, get on for Granica, look at the different comments. You know, you're gonna get the people that are gonna super hype it up. You're gonna get the people that are gonna make it sound like it's the worst thing in the world. You know, look at the, the reviews where people actually, you can tell that they're taking their time to really decide on whether they like it or not. Yeah, I'm just starting to do a quick like read through of the newer, the newer ones. I don't understand why I dropped in. I thought it was going, because it was going up and then it just kind of dropped. So I don't know what that was about. Uh, the dry down is boozy, apple, drizzle, and caramel. I wouldn't go that far, but all right. Boozy. I mean, I can smell boot. Yeah, I can smell the alcohol in it. Yeah, okay. Apple, caramel. And You know, if I sit there and like focus on that, yeah, sure, why not? But no, it's not, this, these are not gourmand experiences. That's another gripe of mine. When people talk about gourmand and there's nothing gourmand about it at all. Um, I, got, I got fooled a few times, which is another reason why I am taking a step back with Navitas is because I've done a lot of blind buys over the last year and you know, that can cost thousands of dollars over time. And a few of the blind buys I've just recently bought in the last few months, I did not like them. And I was like, all right, I gotta come to a halt. Now I gotta like really get picky with my blind buys instead of just buying just because. Um, overall though, most of the, these reviews are, are pretty good, I would say. You know, like I said, it's not the most amazing, but it is, I think, I think it's good to have in your collection. But again, like I said, if you don't like musk at all, try try this combo. Try Casablanca, God is a Woman, and Kaylee 28, and you got your apple pear sweet experience. So anyways, all right, I'm done rambling. That's it. I just want to share my opinion on this. Um, should you buy it? You know, that's on you. Uh, if you're curious, if you're like me and you're, you're, you're like, should I buy this or not? Buy it now. Do not wait until the code is gone because then it's to me going to be, you know, not worth the price. So, all right, that's it. I hope you guys enjoyed my video. I'll be making more videos in the near future and I'll see you guys next time.